Why are you doing this? I mean, why have you got to have it? You have a heart attack or something? No. No. Oh, trying to prevent one? Apparently the doctor is. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I don't go to them. I know. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They're practicing medicine. <sighs> well, does anybody... <laughs> does anybody uh, not practice medicine? No. That's they all the, They all practice. practice. Yeah. That's the problem. So there's no one dude that I I'm done practicing I'm gonna do medicine I'm gonna do medicine no no mm -mm. Hello and welcome to the Ben on Beer Show for Friday, September 28th, 2012. This is a show about beer, brewing, the people, and the business. I'm your host, Ben Rayberg, and with me is... Donovan Edkisson with the Narrow Media. All right. Donovan produces this show and hosts all of the videos and handles all of the syndication and everything all of that good stuff so if you have a show idea hey call me this guy um what was the last beer you had what we drank last week or mm -hmm. week before that was you know, I'm gonna have to start Pop quiz. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to start looking at the the, the show notes. <laughs> it was from this company. It was Victory Brewing Company's Hop Devil. That's right, the Devil. Hop Devil IPA. Yeah. And I've got a new neighbor at work. I gave him one of them. Mm -hmm. Still sitting in his fridge. He's scared of it. He's scared of it. I I gave him one of these. Yeah. One of these uh, Prima pills and. Um, we'll see if he... He's scared of the hop he's devil? He's scared of the hop devil. <laughs> the big industrial beer yeah. um, drinker, I guess. Well, hey, I have to admit, like I've told you before, coming off of just that's what I normally would drink. Yeah. I mean, it's it's completely different. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the first time I ever tasted of a blue moon, I thought I was in heaven. Because that... Hey... Prior to that, Michelob Ultra. I know. Okay. I know. Blue Moon I, is, is good. I still consider that a craft beer. And I suppose it is. But uh, did you read uh, my review of Blue Moon's Harvest Pumpkin Ale? No, I saw, the, I saw the link come through, but I haven't had a chance to go read it yet. Uh, I was disappointed. Really? I was uh, surprised and delighted by the, the aroma, but then when I got to the sixth one i wasn't just wasn't impressed anymore <laughs> no this was i never had more than like two a night okay so the last beer <laughs> I, I reviewed and um by the time i got to the end of the six pack it, it just wasn't okay that that sounds a little better because otherwise i was like <laughs> by the time i got to the sixth one well yeah usually by the time i get to the sixth one i'm i'm not a very like, good judge <laughs> <laughs> well, usually when you get to the sixth one, you really like the taste of beer, and and uh, you generally then, like the taste of most things. And by the ninth, you don't remember the rest. True. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> all right, I don't have any notes from the last show. Um, um, I did have somebody email from show five. Really? Where um, I so we mentioned. Uh, some difference between microbrewers and craft brewers. And mm -hmm. he, he sent a link in, uh, sent a good, he said, just finished listening to show five. Uh, I'm a full-fledged fan now. Nice. And we have at least one <laughs> Thank full you. full-fledged fan. Thank you very much. His name is uh, Kyle Wilson, if I'm remembering this correctly. Uh, and he runs a company called Artist Sync. And I did not read enough about that company, but... That sounds familiar. Uh, I think he actually started following me this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, he started following me, too. 
because whatever whatever I've done this week, I need to continue to repeat it. But I've I've gained something in the neighborhood of about forty five new followers in over four days. I'm Whatever like, you're doing, just keep doing it. I well, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to figure out. What the hell was <laughs> I doing? But uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's nice. I like it. So well, yeah. Whatever you're doing, I think the more hashtags, hashtags is the secret, because um, you show up in searches and lists mm-hmm. and tr- trends and things like that. Yep. Um, and whatever's trending, I guess you could kind of yeah could jump in on that too. If you, if you have something relevant, right. A lot of people don't. Now, I would like to mention that uh, Randy Meadows with the uh, uh, Great Big Sports Show, mm-hmm. Ran Jack Sports, another yeah. show that I produce, um, they they gave this show a, a very big shout-out, not the last show, but the show before. Huh. <clears throat> show five. Show five. Whatever we did in show five, let's go back and look at it. That was the first format where we were sitting okay. both sitting All right. and uh but yeah, he really likes the show. He said he wishes he had more time to really sit down and and uh, and you know watch it more often. But he's kind of behind, so he's getting caught up. And of course, he works during the day, so he can't catch the show live. Yeah. Which is you know a lot of people aren't going to be able to do that. So. Well, that's why we provide it on iTunes. And yep. Actually, just um, not that I'm uh, not paying attention, but I wasn't paying attention. The podcast app on my Apple TV. I decided to click it one day and mm-hmm. and found the show and added it to my favorites and there I was watching my silly <laughs> self on the on the big TV and, and you so, went uh, and I said uh, all right well it it works <laughs> I like that and it it click. works we're done I was done <laughs> the kids walked in the room there's me flailing on about beer help. <laughs> not a kid's show. No, you got to be at least 12. <laughs> to, to watch the show or to drink beer? Uh, where was, are you going? I now? was drinking when I was six. That's all I mm. can say. Victory Brewing Company yes. is the brewery of the month for September. Now, I haven't been plugging them a whole lot, but I've been busy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've tried to do it a little bit. I mean, I'm now, I, I did start following them on Twitter and... You Very know, when I, whenever I was tweeting out today asking, you know, were we drinking another brew yeah. from them? And so don't want them to feel alienated or that we don't appreciate them and their support because we definitely do. We do. Uh, we talked a lot about them last show mm-hmm. and they were um, founded in, in the. Uh, oh, now I don't even know when they were founded. I think it was 95. Why do I think it's 95? Um, by two guys who met on a school bus, mm-hmm. and uh, they are classically trained brewmasters. They are still the brewmasters of their own brewery, mm-hmm. which is, uh, I talked about last week, is kind of rare. The the Usually the founder has the idea and is a good home brewer, develops a recipe, and right. then starts the business, and then brings in a a brewmaster Mm -hmm. who is you know trained in all of the commercial brewing um aspects Uh, but but they became brewmasters before they actually yeah bill and ron ran breweries before they started victory so Mm -hmm. um they are now expanding and we uh we're going to talk a little bit about that they and honestly, I don't have a whole lot of facts here. <laughs> I'm just a horrible host here. Um, <laughs> it's the end of September. It's the winding end of September. Down. And, uh, so they uh, they sent me an artist's rendering of the um, new brewing site. And uh, they are going to more than double their capacity. Now, I said they, they, they produced about 58,000 barrels in uh, 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are at capacity in their current place. So 
this would be a, a very good uh, place for them to produce their year-round beers and some of the seasonals. Mm-hmm. And what they have planned is to do the experimental experimental stuff, small batches and um, uh, like collaborations and um, who knows what else. They'll, they'll have uh, a lab, I guess, kind of mm-hmm. environment at the uh, current um, place. Now, they are... Um, so the new the new place is really going to become the main yeah it's going to be the main producing area I, I think it's going to, they're going to off most of the um, year round production to the new facility mm-hmm. and keep the smaller original facility open for you know they'll have a restaurant and the the gift shop and the brewery but they won't run uh, most of their production out of there they'll do small batches right stuff at the brew pub mm-hmm. things like that mm-hmm. so. Um, on August 9th, they reported that the uh, loading dock installation was complete. Uh, the keg, Important. The keg cooler with a 9,000 keg capacity is wow. up and running. Wow. The warehouse has been painted. I'm not sure I'd paint my warehouse, but they got the money. Well, if you were Steve Jobs, you would. Well, you wouldn't any longer, but anyway. Uh, and the distribution team offices are ready for move-in. Now, that was early August. On uh, September 5th, they reported that the, uh, I guess, the demolition of the existing office space was done. Um, demolition? It says, it says demo. Maybe a demonstration. Like a, a, a <laughs> virtual. Okay. Not sure what the demo means. A site work mobilized and grading started. And a concrete contractor was awarded. I guess they had chosen who was going to be the contractor mm. for the uh, concrete. So um, the tank farm is going to be, I guess, begin construction on October 1st. Tank farm. The tank farm. That oh. is the all the fermenters in oh, here. Oh, okay, okay. The whole tank farm... Gotcha. Wow, that's all backwards. <laughs> it's like a mirror. <laughs> the construction for that was going to begin uh, October 1st. And I, given a uh, loading dock installation complete, I thought that was kind of the end and they're opening soon, but apparently not. Well, and, you uh, kind of have to need the loading dock so that you can, you know, start unloading stuff. I just thought it was kind of the finishing. Don't you, but don't you know how loading to build dock, a building? The loading dock... I guess it's pretty important to deliver the rest of everything. Yeah. So yeah. makes sense. And on the 17th of September, uh, they reported saw cutting and concrete slab removal for all underground plumbing began. So they don't have a toilet yet. <laughs> they don't need to be drinking any beer. So <laughs> we're far away from drinking and... Producing beer, but you can visit the original site, which is still producing and still serving, I'm sure, wonderful food at 420 Acorn Lane in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Acorn Lane. 19335. Just off of Oak Street. Just a little ways off of Oak Street. I'm kidding. I don't know where <laughs> Oak Street is in Downingtown. I think we made that joke last time. We did. I wanted to... Rebring it. Yep. I also wanted to remind everybody about the Victory Around the World contest. Uh, if you send a photo of Victory beer or branded merchandise, aka swag, at a well known landmark anywhere in the world, send it to inspired at victorybeer.com. Uh, you could win a free t shirt, and if it's super awesome, you'll certainly get it uh, posted on their website. T shirt. Uh, this was a summer contest, but they've expanded it indefinitely until they run out of swag or the budget for such contest runs out. I uh, also want to mention the untapped badge promotion. It's almost over, October 15. Uh, check into Headwaters Pale Ale on untapped. Not l- linked in, like I think I said last <laughs> show. <laughs> Uh, yeah. On Untapped, and yeah. if you're not sure what Untapped is, go to u n t a p p d dot com and uh, sign up. They are well tied with Foursquare, 
for their places to drink and whatnot. Um, really cool app to uh, I like it. To make new friends and, and even to, explore new beers and, uh, and talk about what you're doing. And to see really who are the the the, the um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I have no clue where I was going. With that. Well, you said you were here to throw us off, so I did. Here we are, <laughs> thrown off. Uh, yeah, yeah, Without yeah, yeah. my Adderall. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. Well, I have noticed this. You know, I look at your stats and I look at my stats on Untapped. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of catching up to do. Ah, there's no, there's no competition. <laughs> oh yeah, there is. Oh no, dude, it's like we're get not glue. in college anymore. It's like get glue. You no. know what get glue is, right? No. It's it's basically the same type of thing, except instead of checking in every time you drink a beer or you go to a, a restaurant or whatever. You check in every time you watch a TV show or a movie. I've seen your check-ins. Yeah. I'm a check-in mofo. You watch way too much TV. Yeah, well. But I guess you could say I drink way too much beer. <laughs> so. It's fun. It's well, fun. They're supposed, to, they're, they're supposed to send you stickers, but they don't. Well, I have uh, ba- untapped badges. So, no, 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 no. I'm sure if I had someone print them, I would have stickers, too. <laughs> but Touché. I think Untapped was started and probably still maintained by two guys Yeah. Uh, who apparently work day jobs, and this is kind of a side project, but it's got really, they didn't pretty get any popular. VC funding or anything like that? Not that I know of. I mean, I'm just saying that they, they have, when they have to fix stuff, it's... It's kind of, ah, uh, can you do that this weekend, dude? Because I got a date. It's, yeah. I'm not sure. Wow. They may have hired somebody by now, but. Um, wow. Yeah. Why didn't we do but something like that? But they've got uh, iPhone and Android apps and, uh, of course, the website. But their the website kind of takes a crap every once in a while because <laughs> they, they don't have, like, this huge enterprise budget for hosting. So I wonder where they're hosting it. I would, Maybe I AWS, we'll Amazon Cloud. It could be. I tell you what, if they're, if they're somebody's hosting, gonna pay for that though. Oh well, have you ever priced out Amazon Cloud? Once. Yeah. It's not gonna replace my current no, hosting. It's like sixty-five or seventy-five dollars for the lowest thing I could get by with, and that's just that just was to just to keep the machine on. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't traffic. Yeah. <sighs> oh, oh yes. Check into Headwaters Pale Ale. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> on Untapped. Uh, between now and August fifteenth, October fifteenth. And you can earn the Drink Headwaters and Taste Victory badge. Uh, sad to say that I have not yet. I've had, I'm working on the Victory beers. So you haven't tasted Victory yet. Oh, I have. I just didn't check in when I, when I had it. We had it on the show, but it wasn't during the promotion. So uh, You're such a slacker. <laughs> uh, Headwaters Pale Ale. If you buy it, a portion of the proceeds from every bottle of Headwaters Pale Ale is donated through Victory Company's Victory Brewing Company's Headwaters Grant to watershed stewardship groups. More information on that is available at victorybeer.com slash headwaters. That would be a good place to visit <clears throat> if you don't understand what a watershed is. Well, we should go visit then. I'm with you. I know what watershed is from my days working with the city, but I don't beyond that. Mm-hmm. It's like runoff. It's like you know, erosion, yeah. that kind of thing. No, well, maybe it's there. I'm not going to speculate. Let's drink beer. The chat room says they don't know what a watershed is. I actually watershed it. I think he meant is. All right. Anybody uh, running down the road or even cycling? wanted you to hear that. Get home. <laughs> Drink beer. Oh, man, I can smell it from here. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, the reviews on this, I, I, I hate to read reviews before I drink beer, but the reviews on this said it was hoppier than any other Pilsner. It's also rated a 92 uh, at Beer Advocate, and... Beer Advocate was apparently founded by two brothers, last name Alstrom. I think it's Jason and Todd. 
Mm, that smells good. Anyway, they give it mm-hmm. a total of 95 rating. Out of 100? Yeah. And um, it is the uh, highest rated German Pilsner on Beer Advocate. I did not know that until today. A refined Pilsner beer for natural enjoyment. As opposed to unnatural enjoyment? Yes. Uh, no corn was harmed in the making of this beer. You know, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to have to hold this. Okay. Look at that. It's just sitting there like a like an angel food cake. <laughs> Oh, that's that's great. I gotta have a sniff. Now that we're we've aerated it. Oh, that is crisp, fresh. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because <clears throat> a lot mm. of the beers that we've been drinking up until this point have been uh really fruity smelling. Oh yeah. And this Because we've we've had um, mostly really hoppy beers, mm-hmm. and um, some of the hops can give off a citrusy, um, right. solventy almost aroma. And this is, I like this. The original Pilsner was made uh, not so long ago, actually, and in well, a pretty damn long time ago still, 1842, in the small town of Pilsen. 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 Uh, what's the country? <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. I forgot what it was. Bohemia. Oh, I thought you were going to say Czechoslovakia, but... It is now the Czech Republic. Okay. Pilsen. <laughs> yeah. How can you live with yourself? Chat room, you're very distracting. This is twice the cost of your normal corn-based beer. And well worth it. <laughs> so what is this? <clears throat> $10 a six-pack? Or more? Uh, nine forty-nine. Okay, that's about what I expected. This was purchased with, uh, additionally, two four-packs of uh, pumpkin ale. Mm. Each of which were more than this six-pack. The pumpkin ale was more than nine ninety nine for the four pack. Wow! Each four pack. I know what I'm not drinking. Oh, it was it was good. I'm sorry, but I, I mean, unless they're sixteen ounce <laughs> bottles, I can't justify ten bucks for four. Well, it's law. They have to. You can't. It's. It's because of the alcohol content. Yeah. Yeah. One of them's eight percent. My head's not going down as fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey. Almost had a beer foul there. <laughs> yes, uh, another one of the reviews said it was had some incredible lacing, but I can't vouch for how clean these glasses are. Mm-hmm. Whether they were... No, they, they were all hand-washed. Both hand-washed, rather. Yeah, all two of them. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. You can't do that with uh, industrial beer. Dude, I can't do it with the uh, the Prima. Keep pouring. Watch. This is like a... It's a beer foam float. I don't have enough surface tension. That is just wonderful. I don't know how to describe it. I don't have those beer words... <laughs> like those uh, paid authors do. Oh, ho, ho, that's... That was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even going to mention that. <laughs> Something from the chat room. <laughs> About the size of somebody... <sighs> somebody's head. <laughs> are we, now, are we talking in a figurative sense or, or literally? Ah. <sighs> I'm not sure he's ever seen him. Really? Or does he just know what we say about him? <clears throat> well, he's probably yeah, he's probably seen him on the uh our early early South South Geek mm. whenever I was doing the video. 
Mm. That's great. At least I'm not like, sitting here moaning all of it. <laughs> that was... Yeah. I still haven't gotten back to listen to that one. Yeah. Don't. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, we having stream problems? Hmm. That's a lot of hops. Mm-hmm. It is good and bitter. We hope so you type too fast. <laughs> oh. This is so worth it. So, <clears throat> I like the glass. These are the Pilsner glasses that I actually bought for the show where I talked about glasses because mm -hmm. I didn't have a Pilsner glass. I remember that. Um, to talk about. And now I have a set of four. It's really awesome. And a Pilsner to go The with. beer show is really helping my, my cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your liver. <laughs> I'm not getting any lacing here, but we'll see. Okay, explain to me again what's the lacing. What you're experiencing there. Every time you take a sip, mm -hmm. you leave a, a line of, of the foam residue around the glass. Okay. That's lacing? Mm-hmm. So that's either something in the beer or uh, an uh, a glass that's not clean? No, no, no. If the glass is like mine, mm -hmm. there's some, but uh, lacing is a good thing. Okay. Uh, that means that you've, your your malts and your um, your beer is really full, and it's sticky. What, hell? <laughs> what are we? A Final Fantasy battle? Yeah, he says play the Final Fantasy battle win theme. Am I holding a sword? Is that what he? Hey, this, <clears throat> this is Shay we're talking about. You never know. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> it is a uh, hmm. it's a good beer it is what is this did you did you say what it is on the bitter scale oh I don't know what the IBU is mm -hmm. it's a pilsner you're not supposed to really even count it but well it's okay I'm sorry it's gotta be in the in the at least in the 30s I really don't know okay somebody look up Somebody look up the uh, IBU of Victory Brewing Company Prima Pils. Now, the word Prima in German just simply means great or excellent or mm -hmm. awesome. That's usually what it means in English, too. I'm just saying. Mm. That's why they call it. And, of course, we have to have... The picture of uh, hops. That is a hop strobile. Yes, the hop cone. Yeah. No, I, I was just looking at you funny, that's all. Okay. But anyway, so you can see it. Now, in uh, before the 1840s, they obviously didn't have any air conditioning. Obviously. Uh, the beer in Bohemia was not standardized. It was whatever. Good grief. This is a 64. I thought it was bitter. It is really bitter. Hmm. I need a better service provider. Sorry. <laughs> what can yeah, I say? Sponsor. Yeah, I need a sponsor. <clears throat> So, uh, it was kind of whatever you get, whatever. You're not getting beer from far away because, one, it can't get here very quickly, and two, it's not going to last long. Right. But the beer got so bad in Pilsen that the city council dumped out 36 uh, casks of beer, which is, you know, like, like 36 barrels of beer. Right. <laughs> well, when the city council says the beer is crap, there's something wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine that happening now? The, the city council has voted 
the beer, the is, beer crap. is no good. <laughs> we need a better standard for beer. Right. <laughs> I could see that happening in Tifton, Georgia. <laughs> so, yeah. So Pilsen, uh, they got together and they, they, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they invested in the state of the art brewery. Now this was 1840s, and they hired a guy named um, Joseph Grohl. He and he was a Bavarian brewer. He um, created uh, lighter malts and bottom fermented the beer, which is it's called lagering, mm-hmm. and it was fermented in cellars under or caves rather under the city, and. Uh, that brewery is still there today and is known as Pilsner or Quell. And um, that's basically the story of Pilsner. Cool. So that's still there? It's still there. Still producing. You can go buy Pilsner or Quell, and it's pretty good, hmm. even though it's owned by S.A.B. Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. They... Uh, and that that first batch came out in November 1842, which happens to be 170 years ago wow. this year. Wow. I know what we're not drinking. And we're not uh, drinking we're that not first drinking, batch. Uh, <laughs> we're not drinking a Czech Pilsner. <laughs> we are drinking a apparently a German Pilsner, which doesn't make any sense to me, uh, with a, a, an American... Influence, meaning a Pilsner with a 64 IBU. What should I be eating with this? I think it would go good with a hamburger. It would. I mean, it's a little bitter. You want something, um, I don't know, you want something sweeter. Like a, a brownie or something. I don't know. Brownie and beer, okay. 64. Like the Headwaters Pale Ale is like 67 or something. Oh, he got that off of uh, <clears throat> draftmag.com. Yep. Yep. Thank you, by the way. Yeah. Save the show. Shout out to Shay in the chat room. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, Kyle Wilson at um, Artist Sync, mm-hmm. he, uh, he sent me a really long email. Uh, praising the show and and likes the show and until he saw more. this episode, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see more, I guess. But um, he did send me a link, and I, apparently we had said something about the, uh, I, I guess something about craft brewing, the term craft brewing, or craft beer. Well, that's because I overtook uh, yeah. our definition of microbrewery. Right, because I was I was asking the question because <clears throat> back in the early nineties, yeah. My my boss at the time was we had started talking about <clears throat> getting into microbrews, mm-hmm. and that's what Samuel I'd always heard Samuel Adams was considered a microbrew. That's how he started out. Yeah, I mean, well, he started out in his own kitchen, obviously. Well, but, yeah. Um, so what so, did Kyle, Kyle have to say? Well, he just sent me a link to um, to to um, the Brewers Association, mm-hmm. which you know is kind of a I don't know if it's a standards body or, or what, but they they define a lot of of what beer is and beer styles and things like that. Okay. Um, and they they classify different market segments um, for craft beer. I heard my phone. Uh, and they say the craft beer industry is defined by four distinct markets: brew pubs, microbreweries, regional craft breweries. And contract brewing companies. Now they actually separated in the definitions: uh, regional brewery and a regional craft brewery. So there's there's a difference between uh, a simple brewery or a big brewery and yeah. a craft brewery. Um, a microbrewery it produces less than fifteen thousand barrels and sells seventy five percent or more of that. Um, off-site, where they package it. Like, if I made 10 beers mm-hmm. <laughs> and bottled them and sold at least eight of them, uh, 
to a retailer, I guess, or a distributor who then sold to a retailer, I would be considered a Micro. microbrewery. As long as I stay under 15,000 barrels. Now, a brew pub is easy to figure out. It's a restaurant that has yeah. a brewery in it. Yeah. And they sell 25% or more of its beer on site. Mm. So, I'm not sure. Sh- I mean, in Georgia, you obviously can't do anything else but sell it on site. Mm-hmm. You actually have to have a separate company if you want to produce and and retail. A set. Yeah. <clears throat> A brew pub cannot produce and will package its product. Do you have to have two separate brewing uh, facilities? That may not be. I'm not sure, but but uh, or you know this. You is, have to have two separate legal entities, though, as far as I know, in Georgia. This is ABC Brew Pub Incorporated, and this is ABC Brewing Company. Brewing Company that could be. And they could probably brew out of the same facility. They just yeah. got to... Okay. Maybe use the same equipment. That's Maybe have up. the same address. But in a legal sense, a brew pub itself, if as defined as a brew pub, cannot package and uh, that's messed and up. distribute. Well... I know. That's Georgia. That's Georgia. We're getting there. We got growler stores now. We're well, getting yeah. there. Yeah, we're getting there. A contract brewing company is, oh, wow, yeah, contract it was mentioned in there, a, um, a business that hires another brewery to make a beer, basically. Um, Terrapin Brewing Company used to be a contract brewer. They used to, uh, I mean, they had their recipes, they had their ideas, they did not have the money up front for equipment, so they contracted with a, I don't even know where that, product was made but so they got another company to actually they got make another it company to make it put it in their bottles and handle the distribution gotcha um and then it's been years now they bought used equipment from sweetwater brewing company in atlanta and you know uh, bought a place and now they have they i think they produce everything they make everything they uh put their name on i think they produce themselves now hmm. so that's a contract brewing company and I don't have another example of a contract brewer, but... Um, I never heard of it well, until now. Yeah. Um, well, if a small brewer has a really popular um, beer, yeah. say, well, even Terrapin um, over here in Georgia, and they want to distribute in California, they could contract with Sierra Nevada or Stone or something like that to produce their product... Um, and trust them that it's going to be the quality. Because it'd be cheaper <clears throat> to do that. It would be it would be more cost effective to, to do that than to try to ship everything over yeah. there. So I mean, it makes it, sense. That would make sense. But mm-hmm. you'd have to have a wildly popular beard. Mm-hmm. I would only do that probably if um, if I was selling something overseas. Yeah. I'd have a contractor in London or or Bavaria or something. <laughs> Works for me. Oh, now it has two different entries here: regional brewery and regional craft brewery. A uh, regional brewery is defined <clears throat> as um, producing between fifteen thousand and six million barrels. That's a <clears throat> spread. Yeah, that's you know, a <laughs> lot of microbreweries or a lot of craft brewers fall in this category. <laughs> quite obviously, last year we produced fifteen. Actually, I do not believe there is a craft brewer that produces. More than six million. <laughs> six million. Uh, Sam Adams, uh, Boston Beer Company, is the largest uh, craft brewer in the United States. They make like 1.2 million barrels a year. So, well, last last I saw. Mm. And it says it defines a regional craft brewery separate from that, and it's an independent regional brewery that um, has either an all malt flagship or has at least 50% of its volume in either all malt beers or in beers which use adjuncts to enhance rather than to lighten flavor. Now, shit breweries like Budweiser, mm-hmm. Anheuser-Busch rather, or IB InBev, whatever the hell they call it now, <laughs> they use uh, hop extract, mm-hmm. not real hops. They, <clears throat> they buy a hell of a lot of hop extract, and they use... Um, 
corn, malted corn or, or, or corn syrup in the wort to bring up the flavor, lighten the taste, and make it drinkable by college wussies. <laughs> so, Because they drink it by the gallons. Yeah. So craft brew, craft beer is uses can use adjuncts to enhance, whereas you know we we have an enhanced flavor. This is probably an adjunct free pilsner though. Um, but you know we have um like a coffee stout. It's is incredibly strong, and it, the flavor obviously mm-hmm. was not lightened by the the adjunct coffee. So that would be the craft beer and of course a large brewery is a brewery with an annual beer production over six million barrels that would be in ab and bev you know they they produce more than six million barrels of, of bud light every year well that's because they're in the business of making money not making beer that's right making you think you need bud light for some reason if you think you need bud light you might as well drink water just drink water. Yeah. It's cheaper. <laughs> and it tastes actually tastes better. Mm. No headache in the morning. Same could be said for Michelob Ultra, but hey. A Coors a, Light or, yeah. or uh, Milwaukee or... Oh, God. Oh, Milwaukee. <laughs> you know I, I don't know if I told you I tested this. Uh, wait, I, I bought all of the you know single can, a 12-ounce can of, of a shit beer that I could find. And ended up with nine, I think. I wrote an article on it. Mm-hmm. I didn't do the kind of video I wanted to do. But anyway. I've seen the pictures. Yeah. Um, I got to, I got down the line. I started like Coors Light, Coors, Bud Light, Bud, some other bullshit. And then then I got to Old Milwaukee, and I swear I was drinking some chemical in a motorcycle shop. <laughs> Something. It was... You know, you say you can taste the can in a canned beer. Mm-hmm. It tastes like the can, liquid aluminum. You know, it the was only disgusting. The only other beer that I have tasted that tasted anything close to Old Milwaukee was Bush. I had Bush, and I think Bush Light. I've never had Bush Light, but I had a friend of mine. Oh God, it was. It's been in the last twenty years, mm-hmm. but it was. It was back in the 90s, and uh, my wife and I were actually over at his house, and uh, we were having supper, mm-hmm. and he decided, you know, well, you know, you know, stay over, we'll drink, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and I'm like, yeah, that's all right. He had a case of Bush. I'd never had Bush. Well, after you get past about the third or fourth one, you don't care anymore. But that is the first and last time I ever had Bush, because the next morning, I had such a headache. From hell. <laughs> I never wanted to see another can of bush ever again. It's odd that I got lacing at the very last drink. It's, it's odd. Very strange. It's odd that it's empty. No, oh, no, that's no oddity. It is an unfortunate commonality. Yeah. But it is good. It is good. That was, wow. I would not tell you that that was a Pilsner. It looks like a Pilsner. It's in a Pilsner glass. Yeah. It's 64 IBU. Well, hmm. you know, I'm, I, I guess I would say that I'm somewhat sensitive to the bitter, and that's the reason why I asked whenever I first tasted this. I was like, what is it? What's the level here? <laughs> um, this is... I was being generous when I said in the 30s at least. Yeah, 64. That is an incredible... Pilsner that makes me feel like I just drank an IPA. <laughs> it is a light-bodied IPA. That is, wow. That that's you're a, right. That's, that's a couple of hop additions at the boil. That's that is. That's right. not just aroma. Yeah. That that's all the way in the corner of your mouth. And it's just hanging out, and, and it's beating my palate to death. That is what it reminds me of, though, is an IPA. Yeah. I'm sitting here thinking, why does this taste? Yeah. Okay. Prima Pills Pale Ale. That's what it was. Isn't that what it is? Didn't it say Pale Ale? Yeah. Prima. An exclamation of joy. A recognition of accomplishment. Though it's spoken in German, it's felt in all languages. There you go. 
<laughs> I should have read the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it's what escaped from our lips as we sampled the first brew of this mighty Pilsner beer. Mighty. Mighty. Mighty Pilsner. Though we'd been through a few in our years with other breweries, uh, finally, with whole flower European hops and fine German malt, we had achieved what we'd sought for so long. Prima. An exclamation of victory. Prost. Whatever that means. And that's from Bill. Bill and Ron. And Ron. Yeah. The brewmasters of victory. Mm-hmm. That, that's funny. It brewed and bottled by Victory Brewing Company at our sole location in Downingtown. And their uh, expansion site, I think, is not in Downingtown. Yeah. It's in another city. But really close. And they got their website, victorybeer.com. Victorybeer.com. Yeah, when I was Ooh. trying to find them on uh, Twitter, I kept wanting to look for Victory Brewing, but it, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, Victory Beer. Yep, every once in a while I would forget what it, I would try to type victorybrewing.com, and <laughs> that might actually work. It just redirects to mm-hmm. Victory Beer. All right, the, uh, it's, it's finally time. Really? To announce the winner. We got to do this. Of the Plastic Beer Steins. It's right there. At least 10 steins of this size, I, I guess. I can't be sure what you're going to get. Uh, but we have a winner. I forgot my computer, so I went ahead and ran the chooser. Mm-hmm. If you want to see the script, uh, you're welcome to. Just ask, and I'll I'll put it up. Um the winner. Uh, this, this doesn't need a huge. I needed. I needed. This a drum doesn't roll. need a drum roll. It's yeah. plastic <laughs> beer stein, and there's no guarantee that the dude who sent them to me is actually going to get off the couch and send them to her. Well, we could all. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many entered? Three. Three. <laughs> I got none this week. Three. Hey. Did Kyle enter? And my new friend Kyle is the last to enter. You should have just given it to him. I I should have. He was the first <laughs> name come to mind. I was like, hey, you know, i got to pick a winner. But no, I ran the program today for the last time. And uh, Diane from Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't even know. I've never heard of her. But she, she Diane. Sent, she's, Diane sent in an email. She was my first to enter, actually. And uh, she's the winner. Well, congratulations, so, Diane. Diane. You will be getting an email from me um, um, asking if it's okay if I send your address to the individual who is going to send you these plastic beer steins. With a, and you can use these to put whatever you want in them because by the time you consume whatever's in here, you're so drunk off your ass, you don't care. <laughs> so way to go, Diane. <laughs> Yeah, you'll receive at least 10. Um, He said 10 and sent me 14, so... uh, Math major. Good sand toys. You know, the beach isn't too awfully far from Charlotte. Um, But, yeah, you'll be getting an email from me, and uh, congratulations, I suppose. Uh, You won some... You won some plastic swag. Useless beer swag, (laughs) yeah. They won't have been on beer on them. They'll, they might have Glen Oak basketball, which I found out is like a, a young person's basketball league somewhere in Ohio. And Shearer's is, uh, what do they make? Like lunch meat or something. What is that on the... I don't know. <laughs> maybe they're overruns. Maybe they're just samples that the company printed. They could have stolen our logo and put it on here. That that would have been nice. They could have. We wouldn't have mind. Then I mean, I'd be more, way more apt to buy them <laughs> if it had my own logo on it. That's right. <laughs> so. Um, so anyway, congratulations, Diane. Congratulations. I'll be emailing. I'm not going to call. I don't have a number. We don't like to talk to people anyway, so we don't call people. She did send her address. I'm just going to, you know, 
Well, yeah. Tell her congrats and uh, ask her if it's okay if I send her address to this person. This person, this representative from uh, the promotional company. I don't have any news. I've been very, very busy. Slacking. Uh, but that's all we have for today. What? That's it? That's it. We're almost at an hour. Yeah, well, you are what? at an hour. <laughs> okay. If we cut the show a little bit short, maybe more people will listen to the whole thing. <sighs> and here are my messages about drink craft beer responsibly. Well, that's that's right. And I, I was at the Brewers Association uh, website, and they've got a, a little badge at the bottom. It's, Savor the flavor responsibly. That's kind of cool. Savor the flavor. One more beer, and I won't be able to say that <laughs> <laughs> fast. So, oh, of course, we would like people to call in and tell us what they think about the show, or if they've got any questions yep. or comments. You want to tell or, me I'm a shithead? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, he's a shithead. Just go ahead and tell him he is. And uh, <laughs> the number is three one three seven one eight two five five seven. Or if you want to sponsor the show, you can send uh, an email and well. Uh, Amazon gift cards, any other electronic cash? Ca- well, you can't send cash to info <clears throat> at anero dot com. Well, no, you can send bank accounts. Bank account information, <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. No. Uh, really. If you have uh, any other gripes and don't want to talk, you can also send your email to info at anero dot com. Or if you want to send anything directly to Ben. Uh, I don't have an address at benonbeer.com, but we, you can certainly email benonbeer at gmail.com. I know it's kind of weird, but... <laughs> you could have an email address at benonbeer. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And it would just forward to, to benonbeer, benonbeer at gmail.com. <laughs> so save save a step, you know. Computers work hard enough for us already. Yeah, they burn so much fuel. <laughs> Not what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, save a couple of bits and a couple of router hops and uh, directly benonbeer at gmail.com. Router hops. That's that's funny. What? Hops. 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 Prima. <laughs> Prima. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't drink and drive. Uh, don't be a dick. And uh, so you don't have to ride your bike to work. Yeah. That's it. Ta-ta. See ya. This has been a presentation of the Anero Media Network. Your reality distorted.